Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. And try the second slide. Yes, oh, it's okay. Okay. Oke. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. It goes. So, we have uh, 3 p.m. Uh, Moscow time and uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome a uh, very important participant from another side of the world and uh, uh, okay welcome professor Oscar Malta from uh, Brazil Oscar thank you very much for your participation and uh, that you agree to to present your lecture here so welcome Okay. Good afternoon. In Brazil, I, I, I would say good morning from Recife and good afternoon for you. Let me start by expressing my, my gratitude to the organizers of this important symposium. And uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, especially my thanks to Professor Marina Popova, whom I know from a long time. We have met several times in conferences in Poland. And uh, so, as you may see the title of my talk, and uh, that just may start with, with a, a small, small history, only two, two, two slides. The first one is that probably most of you uh, remember the so-called surface enhanced Raman scattering, or SARS phenomenon, which was discovered in 1974 by these two gentlemen. And uh, the idea is that you put on a surface of a substrate a metallic island in the nanoscale or microscale. And uh, when you put molecules, around it and you excite uh, and you look for Raman scattering of these molecules, uh, they have identified an enhancement factor of the Raman scattering cross-section by about, it could be by about one million. So this is an extraordinary uh, observation. And uh, uh, one decade later, we motivated by François Ozel. Uh, he was at the moment in our lab. He was in Recife as a visiting researcher. And uh, we decided to see how it could work in the case of bulk a distribution of metallic particles in, in the bulk. And uh, we prepared a fluoroborate glass containing uh, metallic nanoparticles and uh, in the presence of europium ions and indeed we could see an enhancement factor uh, in the emission spectrum of the europium ion and uh, I should call from the very beginning your attention to the fact that you see that the enhancement factor is the same for all transitions. So this is a strong indication that what is being increased and enhanced indeed is the population of the meeting level. It's not only one specific or particular transition. Okay, this is an important fact. And uh, I would show in the next two slides two uh, that I consider relevant in papers. One is by a French group, uh, Bafou and Kidant. And uh, of course, the, the interaction of metallic nanoparticles and uh, an emitting species will depend a lot on the concentration and the shape of the uh, metallic nanoparticles and one important point that I would like also to call your attention is to the fact that they have shown that depending on the size of the nanoparticle 
the extinction coefficient, which is composed by one part, which is the absorption coefficient here in orange, and uh, uh, scattering part, which is in blue. And you may see that in the range where we usually work for the size concerning the, the, the size of the nanoparticles, the absorption component dominates. But indeed, we should informally, we should have to take into account both absorption and extinction. And the way to do this, as I will show in the, the as I'll shown below, that the way to consider this both absorption and the scattering is to work with the polarizability of the metallic nanoparticle and we will be restricted to the case of spherical or very approximately spherical metallic nanoparticles, okay? The second uh, paper that I, I think is relevant is by a, is by a German group and uh, this is important why they discuss in this work uh, the possibility that enhancement could also be produced by species like dimeric for example in the case of gold or silver they the, the enhancement could eventually be produced by uh, dimeric ag2 uh, au2 species or ag3 and so on uh, that could transfer energy uh, to to the emitting species, and uh, instead of a big big nanoparticles, that in which the plasmon effect, as we will discuss, could be important. So, the, it is very important when we work in this subject to pay attention to this fact, and uh, so as I mentioned. Uh, we work with the polarizability of the nanometallic particle and uh, we assume we are limited to spherical shape of the nanoparticle and we, we learned since uh, 1985 uh, with the help of Francois Ozel how to treat this uh, theoretically there is a review, uh, uh, relatively recent review in this book, and uh, we have a chapter desk there on this subject. And uh, uh, I think it is worth to just to mention that uh, many decades ago, uh, I have uh, treated the influence of uh, metallic nanoparticles, uh, uh, plasmon bands, in, I would say, a simplified, a rather simplified way uh, for nonlinear process like uh, two photon absorption, up conversion, which was discovered in, in the 60s by Francois Ozel, and cooperative effect. Uh, uh, which was indeed for in the case of rare earth ions were discovered by uh, Professor Feofilov. So this is, is a great honor for me to be talking here in, uh, in his homage. And uh, so we have treated this, but in reality, in, in, in real systems, the situation is of course much more complex. Is not so simple because you may have uh, other process like energy transfer, energy migration, cross relaxation, non radiative decays, and so it's it's a more complex situation in real systems. Mm -hmm. But we uh, this is probably one of the most important slides that I would like to show you is that when we are dealing with the influence of a plasmon band from metallic nanoparticles on a rare earth emitting rare earth ion for example and uh, we have we have discovered that uh, there is a strong competition there is there should be a balance between mainly 
what we call local field enhancement if we have good resonance conditions with the plasmon band of the metallic nanoparticles but also we have energy non-radiative energy transfer from the emitting ion to the plasmon band and this is a very important channel and you may ask and why not energy transfer from the plasmon band to the emitting ion it's because uh, in, a, in an appropriate system of rate equations, you'll see that once the lifetime, I'm sorry, once the lifetime of the plasmon band is extremely short, extremely short, it, the energy transfer process from the plasmon to the emitting species is not uh, operative we can see this in an appropriate system of rate equations another another point is that non-radiative transitions is also very important non-radiative transitions in the uh, rare earth ion and so uh, we have a competition between these phenomena these uh, pro channels, these processes, and uh, uh, these uh, in setting up an appropriate system of rate equations, if we are interested in quantum emission, quantum yield, and so on, we should pay attention to these, to these facts. So uh, the model, as I mentioned, uh, we work with the polarizability with the complex dielectric constant of the, the comp composite medium and uh, the polarizability of the metallic nanoparticle in the composite medium and uh, uh, transitions in the emitting species as well as the index of the refraction will be modified and they will depend on distance and the polarizability of the metallic nanoparticle so these i'm not going to details uh, but these are the main points that we take into account in from the theoretical point of view and uh, uh, lifetimes are also changed and uh, energy transfer from the Europe, uh, from the rare earth ion to the metallic nanoparticles, we have shown that we may express in this way. Uh, once again, I'm not going into the details, but this delta here is the energy difference between the plasmon peak and the energy of the emitting uh, species. Okay, so we see that it's a dipole-dipole interaction because the nanoparticles are very big. So distances from the emitting species to the metallic nanoparticles are usually large. So dipole-dipole interaction, in this case, involving a plasmon and electronic levels of rare science should be dominated by a dipole-dipole interaction. And uh, so, we know how to express, we know how to treat this. And also concentration in the presence of uh, nanoparticles and in the absence of nanoparticles, this ratio is quite important. I will comment on this factor here, D, a little bit later. And uh, finally, the intensity or em emitted power or it could be the number of emitted photons, in which case the energy does not appear. We can evaluate this as a function uh, integrating in the distance. And we finally arrive at the result, theoretical result, that allows us to, for different values of excitation wavelength, if it is close, uh, to resonance with the plasmon or it is not it is completely out of resonance values different values of known radiative decays and uh, this cr is the enhancement factor so we were able 
to to plot this this is uh, as a function of the distance uh, for different values of known radiative decay if we amplify this region here around 40 angstrom we may see that we may even because of the competition involving uh, energy transfer from the river thions to the nanoparticles we may even having uh, quenching or a luminescence quenching uh, region we were able to describe this and uh, I will focus here in the case of uh, uh, europium complexes just to illustrate and the intramolecular energy transfer in this case becomes uh, very important but we have to be very careful because if the ligands levels triplet and singlet excited states are close to the plasmon uh, band and also close to the excited states of uh, in here in this case the european ion we have to be very careful because the excited states of the ligand would have to be included in the analysis so uh, it is uh, it would be a good idea to choose uh, ligands for this subject uh, in which the excited levels of the ligands are above the plasmon band and this indeed was done in a very nice experiment by the group of professor Renata Renata Heisfeld and uh, they uh, prepared a thin film polymeric film and they put it in uh, this complex of europium using the EDTA ligand precisely uh, because the the energy excited energy levels singlets and triplets of the EDTA lie above considerably above the plasmon band and they 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 made uh, they uh, synthesize the system containing uh, silver nanoparticles and what they see in this case they firstly identified the plasmon band it's here and we here there are two important points concerning the excitation wavelength if we excite here and this uh, 393 uh, nanometers coinciding with the quintet L6 level of the European ion, we would have one result. And if we excite here in the quintet D1 level uh, of the European ion in 532 nanometers, we would have a completely different result. And we would indeed expect this because if we excite here, energy transfer to the plasmon band should be much more efficient than energy transfer from the quintet D1 to the plasmon band since it is above the maximum. It is still inside the band, it's a very broad band, but the quintet D1 is far from the, the peak of the plasmon band, but it, it still is uh, inside the band so this is an important aspect and when we excite at the quintet l6 they detected an enhancement factor of approximately 3 uh, 2.79 and uh, notice that again uh, independently of the transition the enhancement factor is the same so it means again i would repeat this it's the population of the meeting level of the european ion which is being changed which is being enhanced due to the presence of the metallic nanoparticle but i come back to the question of the excitation if we excite in the equator l6 which is above the maximum of the 
plasmon band of the silver nanoparticles, and we see an enhancement factor of around three. But if we excite straightly in the quinted D1 level of the europium ion, we see a completely different situation. We see an enhancement factor of 50. The group of Professor Reisfeld, they could see that. And this is, a, a, it's a linear effect. And this is a rather uh, extraordinary results concerning enhancement factors. And uh, we decided to uh, try to rationalize we decided to describe how could we understand a so high uh, enhancement factor. And what we see is that uh, one have, uh, we have made, a, uh, in this work, we have made a premise, which is that under, during the synthesis process of the composite medium, uh, the lanthanide complexes migrate towards the metallic nanoparticles and this is the diff, diff distance that appeared in a slide that i had shown above and uh, so that we assume that the complexes uh, are inside or rather inside a sphere of radius are not and uh, so if we assume this we can explain we can explain the enhancement factor of 50. we were able to do this this was published and uh, Finally, the last part of my talk concern more recent results, theoretical results. Again, experimental results from the group of Professor Reisfeld, but not using gold or silver nanoparticles, but using copper nanoparticles. And in this case, it is known that the plasmon band of copper nanoparticles lies much uh, it's 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 much lower in energy than the plasmon band of silver nanoparticles but anyway they could detect they could see an enhancement factor of about three in this system it's a polymeric system and uh, then we were able to explain their results but by taking into account this is the important point in this work taking into account that copper is very very easily oxidized and so copper nanoparticles copper oxide nanoparticles are also in the medium and we have shown theoretically, that it plays a very crucial role in the whole process of enhancement in this composite systems. Okay, the situation is quite different from the case of silver nanoparticles. And uh, uh, this is a schematic, this is an energy level diagram to, to illustrate the model we have used and uh, so in the case of nano ox uh, oxide coupled nanoparticles the uh, no plasmon band are pre is present and uh, indeed what is playing a role is interband transition in the system in the copper oxide and in this case the lifetime is not so short as in the case of pure metallic nanoparticles. So you may have energy transfer from the copper oxide nanoparticles to excited, more excited levels 
of the europium ion and also it's important to take into account a back energy transfer okay non-radiative decay rates again is very important and uh, in this case the pure copper metallic nanoparticles lie very much below and uh, in this case we have of course we may have a local field enhancement due to the plasma copper nanoparticles plasma but also energy transfer from the europium ion to the copper metallic nanoparticles and we have in the appropriate system of rate equations we have to take into account the balance between all these all these processes if we we take out one of these channels these two channels the copper oxide and the copper pure nanoparticles then the situation the the theoretical predictions are not good but if we take into account both both and we know very well that in the case of copper uh, copper is very easily oxided and then we were able to set up an appropriate system of more complex of course in this case of rate equations and we were able to estimate the enhancement factor in this case and uh, what we see is that is a good agreement we were able to plot the enhancement factor as a function of the particle uh, size. And we see that for the particle size described by the group of Professor Renata Hesfeld in the case of copper, and that we see a very satisfactory agreement between theory and experiment. Okay. And this was published. Uh, recently in Journal of Luminescence. I forgot to put the reference here, but that it just appeared. And uh, I can send the reference to you if you are interested. And so uh, concluding uh, that it's very important, as I had shown in the first energy level diagram uh, showing the plasma band in a general way and uh, the energy level scheme of the emitting species. There is a competition or a balance that should be taken into account between field gradient effects or local field enhancement, uh, non radiative energy transfer from the emitting species to the metallic nanoparticles if they are not oxided uh, like in the case of silver or gold and uh, non-radiative decays inside the emitting species this competition is very important to be taken into account in when we set up an appropriate system of rate equations and we concluded that the experimental observation can be rationalized by the present model, assuming, as I mentioned, I emphasized above, a confinement of uh, uh, europium complexes that during the synthesis process, we assume that they migrate towards the metallic nanoparticle. And the overall result is that uh, we corroborate with the so-called electromagnetic mechanism. Okay, and in the case of copper oxide, in the case of copper, copper oxide nanoparticles play a crucial role. It cannot be, it cannot be taken out. Okay, so these are the conclusions. And I would like to thank the uh, Brazilian agencies for support and my university 
and uh, I would like very much to thank you for your kind attention. Спасибо. Thank you very much, thank Oscar. You. Thank you for extremely interesting talk. And we have uh, uh, questions from the chat. Um, it's from Andreas Mekering. So, and yeah. first uh, question is, uh, okay, very interesting talk, Oscar. I have two questions. First, uh, for okay. the 50th uh, enhancement, you indicated yeah. that the European complexes move please, closer please. towards the argentum particles. Do you, uh, do you have any experimental evidence? Please, uh, I cannot see the, the chat. But uh, uh, I read it. I read this question. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, yes. yes. Please, so you, uh, let me read. For the 50s enhancement, the you indicated that European complexes move closer towards the argentum particles. Do you have any experimental evidence? Experimental in the case of silver nanoparticles. Yes, yes, in the case of silver, silver nanoparticles. Experimental left dense of... Uh, of evidence one. of moving of European complexes towards, ah, okay. uh, towards particles. If they are moving. Yes. Uh, no, we have no, not yet, experimental evidence. We have uh, theoretical, uh, you know, in terms of chemical potential, we have some, uh, we could give some explanation, but experimentally, you are right. Uh, it's a very important question. We have discussed this with uh, Victoria Levchenko, which belongs to the group of Professor Reisfeld. We have no experimental evidence of this. But and, the uh, fact is that if we don't assume this, and we have uh, arguments, theoretical arguments in terms of charges, distribution and chemical potential that could justify this premise okay but we you are you are right we have no experimental evidence it's direct experimental evidence of this actually you know oscar uh, i have uh, uh, at least one idea how to do this it's possible to use fluorescence nanoscopy experiment uh, in order to visualize all the uh, emitting complexes around the particles. Then you can map okay. the positions uh, of these complexes with nanometer accuracy. So uh -huh. you, can, uh, you can see this distribution in the space, spatial distribution uh, directly yes, yes. by fluorescence nanoscopy measurements. Yes. So maybe we, we can discuss later this question. I like these results very mu much. Okay, so, I would like very much to discuss. Okay. I think this and, is then, a... and second question from Andreas Meyering. Uh, do you see faster radiative decay of European 2 plus? The tail of the plasmon band uh, overlaps with the European emission and could uh, enhance the decay rate and also give information on the proximity of European 3 plus to argentum nanoparticles. Yes, yes, I agree with Andres. And uh, all these experiments, the case, the, the first question, the case of doing uh, fluorescence in the nanoscale, here in Recife, we, uh, we, are not, we cannot do this from the experimental point of view. But in Sao Paulo, with our colleagues in Sao Carlos, not not in Sao Paulo capital, but in the countryside of Sao Paulo, Sao Carlos and Araraquara. They have equipment in which we could do this. Fluorescence in the nanoscale. It's a very good idea, I think. And uh, we'll try, we'll try to do this together with students. And uh, for uh, the comment by Andres, uh, I agree, but I, I, I don't see, Andres, if you have more detailed information concerning the tail of the plasmon band, 
uh, experimentally, how could we do this? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Oscar. For may your... I ask? May yes, I ask Marina. Marina, yes. Yes, uh, Oscar. Thank you for the presentation. And the question is, uh, you have shown the dependence on of the enhancement factor on the nanoparticle size. Yes. But uh, um, it seems that also the concentration uh, matters. What about the concentration of nanoparticles? Yes, it's very, very important. And we take into account, let me see here. I can show you. Yes, maybe. Let's see. I think it's here. No, no. I think maybe it's here somewhere. Uh, Yes, it's here. You see the first equation of the dialect constant. Mm -hmm. The concentration is taken into account through this factor Q here, oh, which is, is called the filling, filling factor. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so the concentration is there, but we have, it's, a, it's an important point. We have to be very careful because uh, since we put nanoparticles, the concentration will be changed, okay? Mm -hmm. But we have to guarantee in our samples with and without metallic nanoparticles, we should guarantee that the number of emitting species mm -hmm. is the same, is precisely the same, because we will compare emission intensities in different samples, you see? Uh -huh. So we have to be very yes. careful. We have to guarantee that the number of emitting species uh, is the same in both samples. And the concentration is taken into account uh, mainly through the filling factor, which appears here. Okay. okay. Yes, thank you. Thank, uh, thank you very much, Oscar, and also one from Andreas Meyering. Thank you for the clear answers, Oscar. Hope to see you again soon. So, uh, okay. yes, so, I and, really. Uh, and the colleagues from the hall, maybe somebody want to ask. Okay, Professor Sergei Moisev. Okay, thank you very much. It's very interesting experiment data. But what can you say about? Uh, for example, in terms of uh, these nanoparticles to coherence of transitions, of optical so, transition. Is it possible to measure this? So, sorry, uh, could you could you repeat a, a little bit louder the, yes, the question, please? Uh, usually, we have very important parameters for optical transition, not only lifetime, but coherence time. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yes. Uh, it's obviously that um, because of such enhancement, uh, probably uh, coherence times also will be shorter. Yes. Uh, did you measure yes. this factor or not? No, no, we have not measured this. What do we assume indeed? Let me see here. Yes, maybe. What do we assume is that the local field local field uh, is just proportional to the polarizability of the metallic nanoparticle. So we have not measured, we have not put it explicitly uh, coherence, okay? So uh, I would like if you could, if you could send to, to me some references or some ideas on how to do this, I would be very glad. I mean, it's possible to, for example, to um, make some experiment like Faton Echo and on these materials and to measure T2 as well. Okay. I you. really don't know. This Why is... Not? But it's possible. It's possible. But you, that's what I'm asking. Could you, could you tell me uh, 
could you give me an idea on how to do this if you if you can measure for example some luminous sense you 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 have some cv experiment yes continuous experiment or you have some time domain experiment no no it's continuous so for time domain experiments it's possible to measure coherence as well for example photon okay. echo yes measurements and you can measure directly t2 uh, time the only question what is the quality of uh, optical quality of your sample it was the temperature if it's room temperature, ah, it's room temperature, yes. But it's possible and, uh, probably to measure at helium temperature. Why not? Yes, I would. I would ask. You know, uh, there is a, a very good group in optics in the physics department. I belong to the chemistry department, which is is a neighbor of the physics department here well, in our no, university okay. it's neighbors <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay and there is a group very good group in opticus and i can talk with him about this okay okay thank you i, I don't know if i really understood that. if you could write me i would be glad i would be very grateful uh so colleagues uh, and Oscar, one more question from me. Uh, uh, do you see any enhancement of Raman scattering? Did you check this effect? Because uh, when you have some plasmon effect, uh, actually you can also observe some uh, Raman scattering enhancement. Did you yes. try to see this or? No, that's a very, very good question. And also, and uh, uh, we have not, we have not looked for, we have not worked with Raman scattering, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, there was a suggestion from a, a colleague from the University of Sao Paulo, which is an expert in SARS and in Raman spectroscopy. And uh, he knows about these results in, in bulk. And he suggested to try to prepare a system uh, including molecules in the presence of metallic nanoparticles in order to look for the effect on Raman scattering. But we, we have not yet done this. So, okay, colleagues, no questions from anybody and from, from online colleagues. So, Oscar, thank you very, very much for your contribution. It, it was an extremely interesting lecture. So, and uh, I you. hope you'll find some, some points for maybe collaboration and so on, because it's very interesting and very actual and topical now. Thank you very much once again. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. It was an honor for me and I'm very glad to have participated in this. I am at your disposal for discussing, for questions, for hearing and having suggestions. And uh, I hope we can meet soon. And uh, as Andres Meering said, uh, I really hope we can meet again very, very soon. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. So